behind my camera. Coyote, big coyote. It's Mark made me a spreadsheet. This looked like more like $70. I'm just reading them as like, you're dumb, you're dumb, you're dumb. I cannot look at her uh, being in that state. I'm sorry, buddy. I am shaking all over. Oh, I hate that job. I hate doing it. Morning, guys. Yep, the big storm came through last night and we were spared. But Mark's out bright and early. Yeah, we got more snow and we got a big, thick layer of ice on top of it, but we have power. <laughs> and there's no wind so so far so good i just want to make sure the big door isn't froze on carissa and i also want to get some bales out for her while everything's frozen did you survive the cold it's nice and cozy in here yes it is hi you have just become so friendly. Hey, yes. Those are my feet. How did we fare last night? You guys look all cozy. Are we cozy? Hey, looks like we need some more water. <laughs> You're missing it. They're going to eat it all. Come on, Marge. Come on, Rube. Come on, you guys. You better go. What do you think, Rube? You want to scratch first? Oh, yeah, that feels good, eh? I just got the uh, lowdown from Mark. He finished cleaning yards and he said, all right, let's move that manure. <laughs> and it's the one day I'm like, I don't wanna, it's so cold. But uh, the ground is frozen and fit for us to go to the field. So we are gonna get rid of that pile I just put there two days ago, three days ago. big coyote we successfully cleaned up our manure pile for the is this our third time we've cleaned this up most of that's snow but there is a little manure there uh, it's hard to get the very last without a retaining wall it's really hard to get those last few onto the bucket uh, but yeah that's clean and uh, what a shock that coyote who was literally standing right there and I was on this side of the biovator right here I'm like, oh, hello. 
he's been around he's always around this barn like that coyote i've seen for years he's getting really big and he's very bold like he's not scared of us he just looked me square in the eye and it wasn't until i went to try to grab my phone um which was buried in under all my clothes when i started to do that then he like took off uh it was just chaos uh mark was more concerned about lucy getting eaten so i ran them into the barn her and kinsey but yeah that was exciting so that is done and i also went and got a bunch of bales so they are all stacked up there uh, but with bales comes a bunch of plastic so guess what time to stack plastic which i actually despise this job <laughs> I'm disappointed with my numbers. I thought it was better. I thought my weaning. 1.65. 1.65. So Mark made me a spreadsheet. Thank you, Mark. Of this is just feed so far. We haven't done the other expenses, but feeds are biggest. So we have a spot here where we can put how many we weaned per. How many lambs we wean per ewe feed cut? Oh, you know what, Mark? Those, some of those ewes, some of them have lambed twice. So I got to figure that out too, don't I? Because the one group lambed twice. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that makes it complicated. <laughs> That's why I say you should just do it per group. Yeah. Right? Because you finish your lambs in a group as well. Okay. Right? So do you want me to just take one of these groups and tell you what it was? Yeah. Okay. All right, I don't know if you guys can see this, but Mark left the building so I could kind of talk to you guys. This is the spreadsheet he made up. So we have the lactating ration here. Oh, can you even see that, really? Okay, lactating ration. Uh, this is my best ration that I had this year. So this is based on my best taste testing alfalfa. So this is kind of cheating because most of the year didn't look like this. This was like one bag. But I'm like, let's let's do goals. This is what I want all the time. <laughs> Uh, so this is our lactating ration, close-up ration, get my finger out of the way there, flush ration, uh, dry ration, uh, the creep, the lamb creep feed that we have for the lambs with their mamas, and then that's the, that is the supplement, this is the actual final product of the finishing ration we have in the lamb barns, we have corn, supplement, and they also get dry hay. Uh, so yeah, so these are all the costs per day per animal That we have there. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, Total feed cost per lambing cycle of the U. Mark said five years ago when we originally did this spreadsheet This looked like more like $70 um, Per animal and now it's $112 So that's a big jump considering we grow our own feed uh, so that's all prices based on, you know, increase in fertilizer and all the nice things, inputs, basically. Um, and this is just feed. This isn't, you know, uh, admin, labor, hydro, fuel, all that stuff. This is just feed because feed is our number one kind of expense, I would say. So I only, this is embarrassing, but this is, this is goals. I want to get this up every year. Uh, I'm weaning 1.65 lambs per you per group. So this would change a bit, right? Because I have used lambing more than once a year. If we wean 1.65, it actually costs us to get a lamb finished uh, $124.74. And that's if they were fed by mom. So we have the cost of mom getting fed plus the lamb creep feed and the lamb finishing feed. So that's what that ends up being. Now we have all those other expenses that have to go on top of this. And then you subtract that from the market price right now, which is 
I don't even know what it is this week. It, we've been sitting around like 2.20, 2.30 right now. So there's not much left at the end of the day. So you really, this is where you really want to work at. That's why, kind of, that's why my goal is to really work on getting this number up every year. Um, but yeah, and then the uh, the bottle lamb, if a, if a lamb was raised by the bottle and not mum, then the uh, the cost is like one ninety eight oh one. This is this might not be totally a hundred percent because um, you're pulling off lambs that mom probably has triplets most of the time. But on average, uh, that's what that costs. So one ninety eight versus one twenty four. So you again, um, it makes a big difference if you can get this number up because these go down dramatically. Anyway. I hope that was interesting. I thought it was interesting. Good morning, guys. It's Friday already. End of another week, which is strange. Um, woke up to complete whiteout. Oh, and by the way, we got a new dumpster. Exciting. That happened yesterday. Yeah, we are sitting on Friday. I am actually just fueling up. I'm going to grab our wool trailer and go grab... First of all, I'm going to grab my new water gates. Very excited about that. And then I'm going to head up either right before lunch or after lunch. Ooh, we're already sitting at 10 o'clock. Might be after lunch to go grab my wool. So full day, kind of on the road, uh, which this white stuff was not really scheduled to happen. But when you're off the lake, you kind of get this lake effect stuff that no one actually predicts or forecasts. So it is what it is. I don't know if that was a sign to maybe not go on the roads with my truck and trailer today, but yeah, my trailer was froze to the ground. I had to put the truck in a four wheel drive low. And I don't know if I've ever been in four wheel drive low before, which is maybe good. And it's quite a procedure on this old Ford. I don't know if I'm gonna get that wool today or not. The roads aren't exactly the best, but we'll see. I think Mark actually wanted to run some errands in London this afternoon, so if I have a little time, I will. I shared what I shared with you guys yesterday on Instagram about my feed costs and stuff, and people are like, there's more than just feed costs. I'm like, I realize that. Um, so I've got a lot of like DMs that are sort of treating us like we're dumb. It's hard to relay like all the stuff we do kind of behind the scenes, but 
we have spreadsheets built for everything. The problem with the sheep one, we hadn't updated it in a long time because if the numbers are okay at the end of the year for our accountant, for our bankers, uh, my sister does all the books, then we don't do the real deep dive on how to kind of tweak our production. It's more just analyzing, you know, when I ship a lamb, I love to know that I'm making money at $2 a pound or, or whatever. It's just, it's kind of just a baseline for us as producers. And the biggest cost that we have is feed. So that's kind of why I started with feed. And everyone's like, well, what about your shearing? And what about that? And it's like, I realize that those are all expenses and they're, they're on our books. Like we have all that stuff. Anyway, it's, I'm, I'm just a little, I'm really, really sensitive today too. So the DMs, I'm just reading them as like, you're dumb, you're dumb, you're dumb. And I'm sure that's not what they're saying but I'm probably in the mood that I should probably put my phone down today because I'm just super sensey. Right, Cinny? We're super sensitive. New gates will help though. She's so cute. You're so cute. The gates are here. They are really heavy. So I was a bit concerned because our old water gates have bracing through the center at two spots, but this metal is way heavier than the metal they used before. So Mark said, as long as the frame is stronger, we probably won't need those center brackets, but I'm just a little concerned with the rams because they like to use it as a scratching post. So we'll see, but um, they look good. The other things that I got them to make up were more rods because for whatever reason, I don't feel like we get enough rods with the stuff that people sell us. These, these smaller ones that fit really nice in these uh, lambing, they're sort of to fit um, the same as these ones to fit in the lambing pens, the claiming pens. And then, and then we have the bigger, thicker ones and those are really to go in those big, gates there. I like them a little stronger because they bend. Uh, they bend when manure builds up or when the, the ewes or rams really push on those T-posts. They start to bend my bend my poles so or bend my rods. So we got some new rods. It's the little things that make me happy. So we have a lot of those. They hopefully won't all go missing. That's a whack of them. These are all the jobs I think about like during lambing. I'm like I need new gates. I need new, I need new rods. I need new this. I need new that. Um, and then I never do it because when lambing's done, I'm fried and don't think about the things I have to do. So we're getting her done. morning guys it is Sunday and uh, for the first time in I don't know how long I went out with my girlfriends last night actually like late afternoon so it shouldn't have been a late night but we end up talking and talking and talking more and getting caught up because we don't see each other very much and it was like 1 30 when I got home last night so yeah I'm on chore duty Chris is away today I can't remember what she had going on today and uh, and I have to kind of get chores done in kind of swift manner because I have a long drive I'm going to go visit my sister actually both my sisters today so it's been a weekend of you know fulfilling the soul <laughs> chatting with the girls
Well, of course, the days that you're trying to kind of get out in good time, uh, I ran out of fuel on my feed cart. I have a U that looks horrible. We've had our eye on her for a while. Uh, she weaned her lambs a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, oh, she lost her wool. She's really, really skinny, and she's starting to labor, like she's starting to labor when she's breathing. So it's looking like a real bad case of Medivisna, and there's no turning that around. I cannot look at her uh, being in that state. So I'm gonna euthanize her. Um, I know this is probably sensitive to a lot of people. This is absolutely the worst part of my job. I hate it, but the only thing that gives me solace at all is I cannot handle seeing a you in pain or is just struggling to maintain a life. I use a captive bolt. So, yeah. So basically this is this is what I use to euthanize a sheep basically. Uh, I just took the end off like this and you take the little bolt here and you load it up here. Just load it there and then you connect this back again and then you uh, pull to pull this to kind of spring load it and then you press the press the, the trigger obviously to um, release the captive bolt and it's instant uh, they will the you will drop and then you know you have it and then it takes it always takes a while they do the a little bit I call it the floppy chicken they do a little their nerves and everything is doing their thing I hate this part Okay, I'm gonna do that, and then uh, we have another little surprise that I noticed when I was doing when I was feeding. So I think I'm gonna be late. This is my girl. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh. She's not eating, not drinking. So this is usually what happens when uh, I have to do this. I say my goodbyes and I thank them. <laughs> but when they can let you do this, it means they're not well. It's so sad, I hate this. And she raised twins. She just raised two beautiful twins, didn't you? Thank you. I am shaking all over. Oh, I hate that job. I hate doing it. If you missed the one vlog that I showed uh, where we dispose of our animals that don't make it, we did get this uh, composter. So we do load here and we add carbon, so straw, uh, manure. I actually sometimes just put the uh, compost back in it and recycle it and then it uh, after a few days it, it heats up as it turns so this turns once a day and then it just spits out at the other end it spits out just a real dry um, we had some wood chips in here too so it just kind of um, it spits out compost at the other end and then we'll spread it eventually so yeah but it's hard the day you do it and then have to use that. It's just like, oh, but anyway, that's, uh, that is our circle of life here. Well, this is the other drama. We have, uh, our ewe lambs got my one little high gate. They knocked it off or got a string off or something. Uh, this barn is getting cleaned out this week, so hopefully that will combat this jumping issue, but we have a few ewes that have vacated the property again, so. I'm gonna see if I can rodeo them over here without Carissa today.
disaster averted for now. Hi ladies. So quiet. Hey Teddy. Where's Peta? Peta. Teddy's so big. <gasps> Hi, baby. Hey. Come. Come here. Are you serious right now? Come here. Good girl. Literally, you have feeders. This goes to someone else. Hello, good morning. Tomatoes. Hi, ladies. So happy. Oh, hi. Water. Hi, Ruby. They love their hay. Hi, Billy's mom. You're so happy. Make sure all the grain is gone. Okay. <laughs> 